I'm going to begin uh, John David by saying, I mean, I read uh, David Duke said he felt he was portrayed as a buffoonish, cartoonish idiot. When you read those quotes, did you just think, yes? Uh, <laughs> listen, uh, that, that means he saw it then, right? Yeah. Then, yes. Yeah. He saw it. Yeah. I mean, listen, he, 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 he got exposed, yeah. you know, by, by a police officer, a very young police officer in those times. He got exposed. So it, it was it was a victory. I mean, obviously, you're working with, with Spike Lee here. It, be, it sounds like he's been a friend of the family for quite a while. I mean, he is a master yeah. of, of what he does. I mean, what, it must have been, for what is one of your, your sort of, the, probably your biggest role to date Absolutely. so far, to, to have had that person behind you at all times must have been an incredible experience. Uh, it was inc super encouraging, and it gave me so much confidence that I didn't even realize I needed. Um, I, was, I felt like my abilities were limitless because of him, because he trusted me with it, because he didn't try to correct me. He... he he didn't really give me any notes, you know what I mean? Like, he, he would strip down stuff from the performance, but he never was suggestive. And I didn't think the film was suggestive in any way either. I thought he just laid out this story, didn't manipulate it in a way that it made it too ridiculous. It just, he was just telling the truth, and, uh, and so was I. And he, was, he, very, he encouraged that so much, and I appreciated it. Because, of course, I mean, there's always a pressure with, with any production, but when you're playing a real person and you know that real person is going to see the movie, that mm -hmm. must just add that little bit extra pressure, I suppose. But is, that, is that a good thing, do you think? Uh, yeah, see, I wouldn't, I, would, I wouldn't use the word pressure, yeah. but, it, again, it just, it just kept, me, it kept me encouraged to know that um, because this man, Ron Starworth, was very generous with his time and information, that I had to honor that. I had to honor the relationship that we had developed uh, through this character and be as, as, as thorough and as genuine as possible. That's the way I can honor him. Because in terms of sort of real props, I mean, he had his real membership card. I mean, yeah, he showed surgery. it to, he passed it around. Yeah. yeah, but also I was reading that th those shooting targets we see in, in the movie, so yeah. they're, they're real. That must oh have been a real yeah. So no, so they didn't make those and th they weren't uh, like from back in the day, just in somebody's garage. They were currently, that is currently being made and they bought that on eBay, man. Like he told me that before we did that take. I couldn't believe he told me that, that they bought those on eBay or whatever website. Yeah, that's, that's, that's crazy, right? Yeah. I couldn't believe that. And obviously, I mean, I think people have been referring to, the, obviously, the phone conversations. And I think people have been calling it the, a white voice or a black voice. And I actually oh. think that neither of those made any sense to me. So I was wondering, how Thank would you, you describe the voice you had to put in this movie? Yeah, what, what would you say? Because obviously, you did have to change the way you spoke. I had spoke. to change, yeah. But how would you describe it? Rather than saying white voice or black voice, what would you call the voice you put? Well, if Ron were sitting here talking yeah. to you, he would say, this is how he was talking to the Klan. That's yeah. how he talked. But there was a language I had to speak, this this very hateful, racist, bigotry language that I had to, that he had to use to, to seduce hate, to seduce the Klan to trusting him. So that's what I had to learn. Just like learning French or Spanish, I had to learn hate, mm -hmm. hate language. And you see how it's generational. You see how, how it, it, yes, this is a period piece, but how these same trigger words are used today. Because, I mean, obviously, so many of the, the big pivotal scenes in this are shot over the phone in some ways. Is that quite a challenge to, because I mean, who would you, I get, I'm assuming you're not actually speaking to anyone on the other No, I, well, they set up or? a speaker, the, yeah. the, the, uh, the office, we were in the studio for the, in, in, for the uh, interior shots, and David Duke's office was right behind me, so Topher was there, I could hear Topher, we were able to talk, and then yeah, on cut, come around and talk about stuff. So that was, that was a huge benefit to the uh, authenticity and the rhythm of it. And we were able to sort of ad-lib off of that and just feel each other out because we were right there instead of talking to you know, scripty or somebody. And in, in America at the moment, obviously, this, this feels like a very pertinent movie. And part of the conflict in America, it seems at the moment, is between the black community and the law enforcement, which could almost create a sort of stigma for sort of young black Americans to enter into the kind of police force. Is, is that a thing, do you think, in America, where it's almost not a desirable job for, for young people who might have had dreams of becoming a cop one mm -hmm. day, but perhaps that kind of conflict could prevent them from, from fulfilling those dreams? Well, I, I think we need to be more resourceful in, in how we communicate ones that are black, the, the African-American community that are, that are serving their community, that are of the badge, that are actually doing their job. We need to highlight them more. We need to thank them more. I mean, because there are men and women out there that are doing their job the right way. And to me, this is, was a great opportunity to display that. Here's a man that did his job the right way, that actually served his community the way he's supposed to, and was supported by white officers, that it takes a community to take down this sort of hate. 
And just uh, and finally, I mean, obviously, look, this is your sort of uh, first big sort of leading role in sure. cinema. Yeah. Uh, obviously, well, I was going to say your face is all over the posters, but not in every single poster. No, some, no, uh, a, but a good on, yeah. on, 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 on. <laughs> But um, just just being the lead role in a film, seeing yourself, you know, a can on the, uh, the, the the lead role in a big film like that, is, is it still quite surreal to, to 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 see that and just to be the the face of this this incredible big movie? To me, the face is that name right there. We're in a, mm-hmm. we are all in a Spike Lee joint. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So it was an, a very ensemble cast, and that's what it felt like to me. Everybody pulled away. Everybody had equal amount of there wasn't no like more pressure or less pressure because of the, where your position was in the film. Everybody, because if there was one weak link, we all be exposed. Everybody was so good, and it just elevated the story even more so. And I think Spike trusted all of his actors. He trusted in knowing that he picked the right ones for these roles. So we were off and running. Brilliant. Thanks so much for your time, Tim. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching. Hey, you guys. Hey, you guys, huh? Hey, you guys, Is yeah. that from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey, you guys.